So we shall continue discussing uh, control structures in Java. Right. Can you see my screen? Ananya, can you see my screen now? Yeah, yeah, I can see. Fine, fine. Control structures in Java. So these control structures are uh, which you might have seen in C programming also. They are similar in Java. So let me write simple if condition if else next if condition if else if ladder then when we get into loops For loop while do while break continue turning the operator we say that are the operator so all these are various control structures that are available in Java so these control structures uh, are generally used to change the flow of execution of the Java program. So we know well that Java program executes the statements sequentially. So one by one, step by step. So if you want to control that, that I want to execute one statement uh, or a group of statements based upon certain condition, and if the condition is not satisfied, then I don't want to execute this particular block of statements. Then we can decide that using control set. So you can see, we will see one by one, simple if condition. So simple if condition is having a syntax. Syntax. Like if here boolean condition test condition we say test condition and it has block of statements this block of statements goes here statement one statement two so on statement n so these are the block of statements so the thing is we put the expression here this expression test expression or test condition we say this would evaluate to either true or false if this is true only then execute this block of statements if it is false then skip this block of statements so after this if there will be a statement statement next assume so here the statement next would be executed irrespective of this condition whether it is true or false this statement after the if block will be executed. So let me write a program showing the same. Oops. 
I am writing a program, creating a class. Test demo. And I am putting that in control structures package. Finish. You can see my if test demo class generated here. declaring a variable print i equals to I say one zero two and here check whether the value of of i is greater than 100 if yes then display a statement mentioning the same so here I write if condition you can see this condition if i i is greater than 100 100 then I'm going to display a statement system dot out dot print then the value of i is greater than 100. So this is the statement that would be executed if the value of i is greater than 100. After this, I just mentioned one SOP statement that is after the if condition saying if condition executed or better say statement after if condition all right and let me execute this so as of now the i value is 102 so 102 is greater than 100 yes of course so this statement gets executed after that once jvm is executing this block of statement it comes and executes the statement after the if condition that is statement after if condition both the statements get executed so when i execute you can see both the statements get executed now i'll change the i value to 12 in this case now 12 is greater than 100 this condition fails now so 12 is not greater than 100 it means this block of statement will not get executed then only this statement gets executed so in this case only one statement is displayed on the console yes you can see the result that is only one statement we are getting displayed. So here the thing to be noticed is the Boolean condition inside the if condition, if it is evaluating to true, then the block associated with if condition gets executed. And if it is evaluating to false, then the block will not be executed. The statement after the if condition gets executed 
irrespective of the evaluation whether it is true or false. So that's about if condition. Similarly, we can go writing if else condition. So let me write if else condition. So if else condition syntax is I'm just copying this if, this if condition and we will be adding an else block for this. Else. And I'll put all the block of statements just copy paste. Yes. Here goes my if, uh, if else condition. So this test condition may evaluate to, to true or false. If this is true, then this block of statements get executed. Suppose if this is false, then else block would be executed. So this test condition, we, I mean the block of statements with the if condition here can be called as if block or true block we say. Similarly, the set of statements that are available in else block are known as else block or false block. So these are the alternative names. So I will write, yes, yes. So what I do is I'll create another class class name is if else test demo finish and here I am declaring so I will make use of the same block. So what I will do is I am copying this paste here. Sorry. Copy, right click, copy. So here I have an integer value i. i and I'm going to check whether the value of AI is greater than 100 or not. If yes, then I'm going to display I is greater than 100. If uh, false, then let me add an else block and display I value is less than 100. So I'm just copying the statement and mentioning less than, less than 100. And this statement that is statement after if else condition. If else condition. Now let me execute presently the i value is 12. So e is 12 greater than 100. No. So if block will not be executed, it gets into else block. So else block gets executed. So let me run this. Else block gets executed and the statement after if else condition also gets executed. So both would be displayed. Here you can see the value is less than 100 as well as statement after the false condition both gets executed. Suppose I change the value to 121 where the value 121 is greater than 100. So if condition gets executed and else part would be skipped this time the value is greater than 100 and statement after if else condition both are executed. So here goes the value of i is greater than 100. So here we are controlling the execution based upon a condition. If the condition is satisfied execute this block. If that condition is not satisfied execute another block. So we have block of statements that can be executed 
based upon the criteria then nested if condition so let me write the syntax so nested if condition is nothing but an if condition and inside another if condition i will copy this portion and i'll add up so if test condition what i'll say is test condition 1 then inside my if block so there will be block of statements so after this block of statements i mean before or after we can put another if condition you can see test condition 2 test condition two. and on a block of statement let it and here so here so like this you can write an if condition inside another if condition so by using nested if condition so what what happens when you write like this so initially the test condition one gets executed if this is true only then the statement block gets executed till here so among the statement block there are statement one statement two and there is another if condition so here this test condition again gets evaluated if this is true then this block gets executed. Suppose if test condition 2 is false, in that case, statement 1, 2, and this executes, then immediately followed by this statement gets executed, and if condition is completely executed, and here, here, the statement next. So system dot out dot I mean anything like statement next I'll write statement next yes so let me write a sample here so I am creating a class with nested if test demo write it So what I'll do is here I create two variables int i equals to 100 into j equals to 200. Now I'm going to see I'm going to print a statement if i is 100 and i is not i j equals to 100 uh, j equals to 200 or better say i value is uh, okay can do of course j equals to 200 then display statement saying the same so how we are con checking the condition is if you can see here if i equals to 100 equals to 100 so the thing is i am going to cross check whether the value of i is 100 or not that cross check can be done using a comparison operator equal double equals Single equals to is known as assignment operator. So let me write here single equals to is an assignment operator, whereas double equals to is a, a comparison operator. Comparison operator. So if i equals to 100, then another condition. If i equals to 100, then j equals to 200. Only then I am displaying 
system dot router print ln the values of i and j j are hundred comma two hundred respectively. If any one of that condition is failing, then nothing would be displayed. So my if condition here. Statement next. Statement next to if at nested if it is nested if condition. So I execute this. So as of now the i value and j are 100 and 200 as per my expectation and I execute this. Yes, both the statement gets executed. Suppose I change the value 200 to j value. In this case what happens is i value is 100 then is j value 200? No, because j value is 202. In this case this statement will not execute. So JVM comes out of this construct and executes only the statement that is present after the nested condition. So only one statement gets executed in this case. Let me re execute it. Yes, you can see. Only one statement gets executed. So the thing to be noticed is you can write an if condition inside another if condition. And second if condition will be executed only if first if condition is true. If first condition itself is false, then no uh, if condition that is present inside that if condition will get executed. So that is uh, how the nested if condition gets executed. So let me write if else if. So what I'll do is I'll copy this. This. And I'll make use of that here. Just copy paste. If else if ladder so I just copy paste. So the thing to be noticed is if there, there is an if condition block of statement and in else block if you want you can put another if condition that is the whole purpose yes if condition what I have to put it huh, I do like this so here if test condition 2 So test condition or boolean expression both mean the same. So in this case what happens? If first condition is so first condition, let me put test condition. If first condition is failing, only then the else block gets executed. My else block begins here and closes here. So while executing this else block, so there are statements and there is another if condition. So second if condition. So second if condition gets executed only if the first con first condition is failing. Whereas with nested if condition, second if condition will be executed only if a first condition is true. So it is sim I mean something like opposite nested if condition. So here let me write a sample example for you using this uh, if else if ladder so this uh, why we say ladder is it looks like ladder when you write this syntax that is why we call it as a ladder or let me write sample class else if 
ladder test demo finish here i'm going to write so what i'm going to do here is so let me write here i'm calculating the average of three subjects and if that average is greater than 75 then I'm going to display distinction if the average is greater than 60 and less than 75 then first class similarly if the average is greater than 50 and less than 60 second class these are the grades that are awarded to students based upon the average of the marks similarly if the average is greater than 35 and less than 50 then third class if it is less than 35 fail so let me write that so how we are doing is I am creating two three subjects subject one so I assume 76 subject two 77 subject three 78 now I am calculating a total of subjects. So total, so total int total marks equals to subject one plus subject two plus subject three. So I get the total. Now average. So average how do we calculate? total by number of subjects that is three so when it, a division occurs for an integer that would result a float actually float average equals to total marks by three so three subjects i get that average here now i am going to check that average if this average is greater than 75 then display distinction distinction suppose look there else I mean if the average is not greater than 75 then else else this part gets executed in this else again we are looking whether the marks are falling in a category where average is less than 75 less than 75 and so and is a boolean operator boolean and i mean logical and logical and average is less than 75 and greater than 60 so the thing is what happens if the marks are exactly 75 in that case i am considering it as distinction itself so we can modify if the marks are oh this sorry I, this is greater than 75 i'm sorry greater than greater than 75 so first class is if greater than or equals to 60 similarly second class is if greater than or equals to 
50. I mean, what happens if the marks are exactly 50 average? Then it is second class. Similarly, third class. And if it is less than 35, it is failing. Exactly 35 also can be treated as third, third class. So if we go specifically like this, then average is less than 75 and the average should be greater than or equals to 60. In this case, first class. First class. Suppose if this average is in a range, you can see in the else part I am checking again. Check if average is greater than that thing is less than 60 and the same average greater than or equal to 50 second class second class suppose if the average does not fall in that section then it would be else. Else if else if the average is greater I mean less than fifty and the same average greater than or equals to thirty five. Then in that, lay, in that case, it is third class. Third class. Else, else. Again, if condition, if this average is great, sorry, less than 35, or less than 35. In that case, system dot out dot and it is fail. Fail. So let me execute this. So as of now, the subjects are, I mean the marks in the subjects are 76, 77, 78, whose average is 77. 77 in the say in the case then it is distinction so you can see distinction suppose i change this mask to 66 67 68 where the average is 67 it means uh, whose marks are in the range of first class that is above 60 less than 75 so I execute this save this go here goes first class similarly you can check for fifty seven fifty six fifty eight so where the average is fifty seven it means second class. Of course, second class in the result you can see output. Similarly, you can check for 26, 27, 28, where the average is 27. That is less than 35 and it prints fail. Of course, fail you can see. So this is how we write if else and writing if conditions inside else part and here so these are the ranges mentioned here if the marks are falling within this range then print so on so thing so here coming here you can see this particular portion this portion. If the average is less than 50 and the average is greater than or equal to 35, 
then third class and here I am going to simplify this piece of code here so here the thing is you no need to check whether the average is less than 35 automatically the if, if condition is failing then it is that the average falls less than 35 then in that case you no need to write this if condition actually so I execute this you no need to write this condition because obviously if it is failing it is less than 35 so I execute and you can see it is failed so the average is 27 over there so here this is another logic of implementing the same so here we are reducing the burden to the compiler of executing this additional if condition instead if this is failing then simply the system dot out dot printl and fail message would be displayed so here that's about uh, control structures with the if conditions so the thing is I will share some PDFs with you talking about these examples and I want you to execute those samples I'll show you the PDFs open So here there are if condition decision making decision making except yes decision making is nothing but the control structures so if you want you can refer to these flowcharts and this if condition yesterday switch statement these things and the ternary operator those things so we will discuss the, of course ternary operator soon so uh, I want you to go through this PDF and if condition I want you to execute these samples or if you have already understood then you just read this uh, PDF that would do enough so I'll share this PDF with you so similarly there are uh, control structures for loops do while loop while then while loop for loop so these and break continue so switch statement so I miss it adding switch statement under control structures yeah break continue ternary operator switch statement also so all these are the control structures this point so I want you to execute those samples and uh, uh, I'm going to wind up this session for today. Uh, do you have any queries from the current session, Ananya? Uh, no, I think this is good. Fine. Then I'll share these PDFs and we shall continue with the loop controls which uh, break continue in next session. Okay? Oh, sure. Yeah. Okay. Fine. Okay. All right. Okay. Bye-bye.